All right. Well, here we are again, folks. We're going to motorcycles. Oh my giddy art, what have we got here? <laughs> when this bike's accelerating, you're just about getting into a sweet spot as it wants to take off. But by then, you go into jail. Right, Reg here, 3.6 moto, and I'm naked again. And my goodness me, Kawasaki's H2. So, supercharged, 200 brake horsepower. What is it like to live with that? What is it like when you're running it in, taking your time to bed the engine in, the suspension in? Um, is it a day-to-day -day bike? Is it a Terrace super naked bike? Let's find out. Cheers, Paul. Oh, that's smooth, is that? God, it's smooth. That is smooth. I'd be really obliged if you could click the subscribe button for me. And if you like what you see, uh, you want to see more, click, give me a like. And um, yeah, let's crack on. No uh, tear arsing, but then with a 200 brake horsepower supercharged engine, I don't think I'm going to have to rev it to make it go. It's not, I, don't, I don't think it's the same as the KTM. The KTM is going to be raw. I think this is going to be a bit more gentlemanly, I'm hoping so. Fresh and so smooth. Oh, bloody nice, that um, is. Like with all these naked bikes, the first thing I've come to notice is that the t clocks are quite low. So because I'm, I am sit quite tall in the seat, um, I have to keep looking down to see the speedo. So I'm taking my eyes technically off the, off the road in front, which is not brilliant. Um, like now, I'm I bet on the camera you can't even see the bike. Uh, um, the bike doesn't feel as big as it looks. It looks quite big and bulky in the pictures, but it feels feels nice. It feels tiny. Doesn't feel any bigger than a bloody 765 Triumph or something. And about the handling, eh? the handling feels quite nice, very neutral. I, keep, I know I keep saying it, but I don't like bikes that feel they want to tuck and sort of push when you go in. I like bikes that roll into corners on a quite a lazy sort of basis. I quite like that neutral feel, and this has definitely got that. Um, filtering wise, that seems to be a doddle. That's not bad at all. And again, because it's so smooth and comfy and well balanced, you can just pick your way to the front and away you go. The seat height is quite nice. I can sit. I can stand above the bike, flat-footed both sides. Um, I've got a 31-inch inside leg, but what's nice as well, this new trend of having quite a slim profile um, on the seat at the front, so that when you sit down, your legs aren't splayed out. Um, so people with perhaps a shorter leg and couldn't have reached the floor on some of these bigger bikes years ago can now reach the floor quite nicely. So, yeah, that's a bonus. Some people have moaned about it, say it's an ugly thing, it's an ugly bit of kit. But I've got to say, um, in the flesh, this colour scheme with the dark graphite grey and the red and the red tank, sorry, red stripes on the tank and the red frame, looks, I think it looks quite nice in the flesh. Um, as with all these big Euro 5 things, the, the exhaust pipe is hideous. Um, but I, I would imagine most people factor that into the purchase when they buy them because most people are going to want to change that and put some perhaps a little bit more attractive might even save some weight you never know good now years and years ago um when the h2 uh monster sports bike came out i was lucky enough to uh, again put some a few hundred miles on uh, that bike i'll put a little picture of me out so i took it on to show the wife i was so pleased with it um uh, I must admit that bike was just incredible to ride and I think this has got to be a slightly tuned version of the of the original H2 because um, that thing is just monstrous. Um, I mean you can see on the YouTube now yeah, there's um, LCR, Lamb Chops has got one and he's put some monster engine mods on it. I mean the thing is just immense and I think they're, they're so unique, they are, they've got a niche whereas I think this is this bike, this naked street bike version same sort of presence same sort of engine configuration same sort of um 
thing with a supercharged engine, sort of 200 brake horsepower, la di da, gonna graham, all that bells and whistles, but in a more usable package, in a package that you could probably use on a, a more regular basis, it's a bike that you would probably want to um, use, and we'll see, we'll see during the day, see how, what, um, what I think of it, um, and see what it's like. So let's do the unfair test down the motorway and see what's going to happen down the motorway. A naked bike like this, a leather jacket is going to be more comfy because it's going to slip through the air better. It feels a really nice, relaxed riding position. Um, the mirrors are all right, they're a well funny shape, um, but the blind spot's taken care of quite nicely, so the mirrors seem right, the levers fall to hand nice. Um, it's got these massive long levers. The bars are a bit narrower than I expected, they're not the big wide supermoto style bars that you often get on bikes like this. Um, they feel a bit narrower, a bit more road bike like, which is not too bad. Right, so there we are, it's uh, 65 now. Let's see if I can put the, uh, put the cruise control on. Press the button, set it, yep, set. That's quite nice, look, uh, no hands, acceleration. But it's nice and gradual. I've ridden bikes like this before where they've actually taken off. You, they take they accelerate quite hard when you use the uh, uh, adjuster on the cruise control. So yeah, you've got to be careful of that as well. Okay, so I've uh, had a quick run through the town, a uh, bit on the motorway, and um, the thing is just silky smooth. The engine is just lovely, it's gorgeous, it's got a nice little smooth. Um, you get a slight vibration through the seat which is a bit weird um, but uh, no gorgeously smooth engine I mean and riding the motorway 70 ish miles an hour um, is perfectly comfortable but you get a sense that if you were to flash down some uh, European autobahn at, at uh, three figure speeds uh, for any length of time it would become quite hard work um, you, there is no, I mean obviously there's absolutely no weather protection whatsoever but I do reckon you could probably get a little fly screen attachment I'm sure someone's going to devise something for this it's far enough forward to be of effective as well so I think you might you might be uh, worth considering stay there boy steady thank you uh, yeah nice I've just had a few little twisties back there and um, only a nice little flowing, nothing tightened but nice flowing bend, you roll off and it like it balances, it settles what, on the overrun which is nice and then you can just pick up that thing and squirt through rolling through these corners lovely, you can sort of drop it into a corner pick up the drive, drive out, ease and squeeze off the gas pick up the drive now, hold it nice and smooth and power out to the side. Lovely. Compared to the other two naked bikes I've ridden recently, the KTM Super Duke 1290R and the Ducati Street Fighter, this bike feels a little bit more stable and I think therefore it feels a little bit heavier, I mean it is heavier, but it feels um, heavier to turn, which in, in many ways I quite like, I quite like the fact that you've got to work it a bit harder to make it do stuff. It doesn't, it's not twitchy, it doesn't feel nervous, it feels very planted. Um, the suspension's okay at the speeds that I've been riding at so far, but bear in mind I'm still running it in. It's, uh, it, I've got the running mileage on, so it's, it's not too bad at all. I mean, you know, it's done 40 miles now for Christ's sake. So, yeah, at the moment, I am quite impressed with it, it feels really smooth, changing the modes couldn't be easier, these little toggle switches up and down, close throttle, job done, currently in road mode, I did have it on um, sport mode for a second when I, on a motorway and that the throttle was a bit more hair triggery, so I actually went back to road mode to soften that initial take up, um, and I didn't think it would make that much difference at low speeds, but it does, it makes quite a bit of difference, this is, in road mode it's much more relaxed, um, less frantic I would say is the word I would, is the word I would perhaps use, um, so yeah, but like now, tipping into this roundabout, it feels really neutral and it feels very planted and pulling away third gear at 20 miles an hour look at that romp the jag wants to play but oh 
Oh yes, have a bit of that all day. It's the beauty of um, the supercharger, I'm sure, is the fact that you don't need to rev it. There's none of that need to build the revs up. I remember riding the old Blackbirds and higher boosters from years ago. For those of a certain age, a Blackbird was a great big bike that went really fast. Um, some of the youngsters probably don't even, your dads have probably got them. Um, and you had to, it was lovely and smooth, turbine smooth, but you had to rev, get the revs up to a good sort of five, six thousand RPM before it would start to leg it. Whereas this, bloody hell, 3,000 revs, squeeze that throttle and it just pulls, it's brilliant. One thing I've noticed as well is the brakes um, are feel really progressive. There's no um, bite, there's no snatch, everything works well. Um, I've got size 10 feet, big boots, and the rear brake pedal is just so easy to get to, whereas on some sportier stuff, it can be a bit of a faff, you've got to sort of go through the old origami with your ankles to find the brake pedal. This doesn't, it, fit, it falls to very nice to, into shape. Um, the levers are quite big, I'd probably want these levers rolled down slightly, just to, so I don't have to do that all the time. Um, but uh, it's... Uh, shape it would be quite nice so i'm just going to go on to a nice little back road now and have a quick little look around this back road and just see what it feels like on a narrower twistier perhaps bumpier bit of road just give the old suspension a bit of a supple suppleness check so like that you've rolled into those corners very very nice so now we're going to get a bit bumpy so we'll probably test it a little bit just see what happens got a nice little deceleration on the gear it's got lovely engine braking um, I mean this is actually quite pleasant, it's bumpy on this little bit of road and it's soaking up very well. It's none of that twitchiness that I've got with the KTM. Um, I, mean, I did make the caveat that the KTM was uh, not set for me and I could do with twiddling the suspension because WP suspension is pretty shit up to be honest. Um, but this Kawasaki, yeah, the suspension is uh, at the moment on these little first few seconds, first impression is really quite nice and supple, nice and smooth. Again, with that lovely smooth engine and drivetrain. See that pothole there, went over that. Didn't do it on purpose, sorry mate. Um, but yeah, that pothole just dropped into and out of. The bike just flickered across it, no dramas, um, which is nice. The bike feels really stable. It's a big, heavy bike um, in one sense. I mean, if you're physically on a scale, it's a big, heavy bike. But now, no, it's nice. It feels lovely. It's got a nice flow to it very relaxing bike to ride and you know if you want it to be fast it's monster quick just a little whiff of the throttle whoosh i mean sixth gear i mean who needs a gearbox just put it in sixth gear and get on with it i mean you could make rapid progress without even changing gear i mean really it needs second and sixth this thing um where's them roadworks then are they around here or what what's going on yeah, there they are. Oh, and we're stopping. That's nice. Yeah, nice. I like it. I'm liking it so far on these, even on the twisted. I thought it'd be bumpier than this, but it's it's either not as bumpy as I thought it was going to be, or the bike is working really well. Sorry, I want to go down there. Thanks, mate. <laughs> you can change line. You can move from side to side in the lane when you want to. You can take a nice position on the road, you can just move to wherever you want to go. Yeah, not bad at all. In fact, you could use this bike as an everyday bike. It's a nice, um, relaxed riding position. It's nimble enough. It's, it's, not, it's not like begging to be raced all the time. The KTM, you know, it's in their DNA. KTM want to race everywhere. They want to go, you know, full gas everywhere. This, it's one of those, it's one of those bikes that sort of says, Phew, I've got nothing to prove, mate. If you want me to go quick, I'll go quick. But if you want a nice, gentle ride through the countryside, enjoy the scenery, we'll do that as well. You know, I can do that, I think. I think that's what this bike is telling me. It's telling me it can do pretty much anything. It's nice. Now, I've not got all the facts and figures um, to hand at the moment, and I'll say that because I was meant to be riding something else this morning, but when I got there, um, as is only right, they'd given the bike to a customer who was having a bit of tr trouble with his bike, so uh, Lagunas have looked after the guy, give, a, give him the brand new bike that I was going to be testing, uh, but obviously, hopefully I'll come back to that 
and there'll be a review on that in the next few weeks when they get the bike back so uh, yeah big tick there for old Lagunas you know the guys had a bit of a query with his bike so they said right bring it in we'll sort it out have one of have our brand new demo um, keep it as long as you like so yeah yeah tick to them um, nice the roads are getting a bit bumpier now um, and I'm starting to feel a little bit of not bottoming but I'm trying to feel that the bikes working uh, working well on these bumpy roads still very stable still very stable a bit of a yaw and a bit of a twist more right, Bradley right the way thank you spot the Rafa man okay right it's enough about suspension it works it's fine it's competent job done Mind the Humpty Back Bridge, uh, we'll slow down, tuck ourselves in the near side because I don't want to meet the tractor or the combine harvester coming the other way. Yep, I know it's macho to try and pop a wheelie off the top but not on a brand new bike that doesn't belong to me I won't. This is where this bike is going to make its money, this uh, slightly better condition B road or A road, long sweeping bends, decent surface. Oh, I think you cracked it. Plenty fast enough. Just hold that wide for a minute. Yeah, you can still get a bit of wheelie, can't you? There you go, nice. Yeah, the engine brake is lovely, almost. When you roll off the trolley, almost holds the bike down it's got a nice sort of um, sensation to the when you're on the overrun it's almost like it's dragging the bike down so you roll off and it like it balances it settles what on the overrun which is nice and then you can just pick up that thing and squirt through roll is lovely you can sort of drop it into a corner pick up the drive, drive out, ease and squeeze, off the gas, pick up the drive now, hold it nice and smooth and power out the other side. Lovely. Well, there we go. Just shy of 200 brake horsepower, a supercharged engine in a nice, solid, slightly heavier chassis, very stable bit of kit. Right, so what do I like about it? Well, I love the silky smooth engine, I love the comfy ride, the plush suspension but on nice smooth A roads or sort of decent B roads it's a lovely thing to chuck about S slightly top heavy um, but I can live with that, it's, uh, it handles really well, it's very true these pretty coarser tyres are lovely um, they seem to track really nicely over all the repair bands and stuff, don't give any grief whereas most inline 4000cc things You've got to wind them up a bit to make them go. This you haven't got to wind this up at all. It's um, I mean the supercharger allows you to sort of live off the low revs, to sort of three, four thousand RPM mark, and it will just waft away nicely. A little whiff of the throttle, and away it goes. The only fly in the ointment is the fact that when it really starts to pick its heels up and you get in that lovely meaty part of the power well by then you're well above the national speed limits anywhere um, so the high power stuff, the sort of eight, 9000 RPM stuff is probably a bit irrelevant on normal roads because this is a bike that you don't need to rev to make it quick it's lovely, short shifting in the mid range is where this bike lives, it's absolutely gorgeous to flick through the corners up and down the gearbox using the acceleration sense and you roll off there's six gear rolling off you've got plenty of retardation it's dragging you back on the engine even in top gear so you've got that little sort of engine braking thing that you can live with on a day-to-day -day basis and as far as the throttles concerned the mode system on this bike is great this so I've got it in road mode I've had it in road mode pretty much all the time um, Sport mode is, well I can't say, I mean 200 brake horsepower in a supercharger Why do you need different modes? It's just fast Whatever mode it's in, it's fast 
I mean, to get that extra quicker throttle response that you get with the sport, and you can detect it, I put it in sport mode a little while ago, and you can really feel the difference between the throttle, the pickup of the throttle. Well, it's even quicker then, um, but it's just, you know, I wonder, is it there for the sake of it, really? I mean, the only place you're going to make the best out of that is perhaps on a track where, you know, your exit, you want that extra bit of snap out of corners, um, and that snap, that brings you on nice with the old uh, electronics. It's got lovely electronics, um, traction control, anti-wheelie, um, ABS, um, all the bells and whistles you could ever want in a road bike nowadays. Um, superb. Um, thankfully, I've not had to use any of that yet, touch wood, but uh, yeah, no, it's great. Uh, it feels really nice and calm. Uh, using the modes is easy. Up and down on this little toggle switch on here, very, very simple. Cruise control. Yeah, cruise control, absolutely spot on. Um, very easy to operate, very easy to set. You don't really need to see the buttons, you know exactly where they are, they're quite easy to hand. Um, you haven't got to go through lots of different menus to find it, which is great. Uh, I mean, aesthetically, it's, it, it, it's quite a handsome, brutish, it's, it's, it's quite a handsome bike in a brutish sort of way. It's a bit like an old British bulldog, you know, they're not the prettiest thing in the world but they've got something about them that's quite adorable you know and I think Kawasaki have done all right with this in the it looks better in the flesh and I'll, I've got some pictures I've taken earlier it looks better in the flesh than it, it does actually in the pictures the photographs don't do it justice I mean I mean look at that I mean god I just haven't got a you ain't got a faff about it it's effortless acceleration, effortless road bike, as a, I mean that's what it is, this is a road bike, it's not a track bike, um, it's designed for the road, it's been tuned to work on the road, you've got that sort of lower, the, the torque comes in a bit lower down than the, the H2 sporty stuff, so that means you've got a bit more pickup in the lower rev range. I mean, I've wanted for nothing, I'm not, and this is being run in. I've hardly ever got above sort of 6,000, well, I haven't got above 6,000 revs really, all the time I've been riding it this morning. And that sense, look, I mean, just wandering through the old uh, traffic like that, effortless. Um, no worries whatsoever. And it comes in nice and tidy. A little bit of tweak on the bars, a little bit of counter steering, just to settle it down. And then, the, oh! Like I said, just effortless. Um, the, the sad thing is really, like I said earlier, when this bike's accelerating, you're just about getting into a sweet spot as it wants to take off. But by then you go into jail. You know, it's um, it's one of those unfortunate knock-on effects of having these wonderfully engineered bits of kit. Um, you know, they are just so effortlessly fast. Um, there's not more I can say about it really, that, that is it. This is a, what I would call a grown-ups express. Um, you know, it's lightweight, it feels light to use, but it's not that light in reality. It feels very calm, it feels very planted. I mean, like now, I'm just about getting to the blood, 70 miles an hour. Oh, got my old petrol light flashing, I'm gonna have to go back to the garage. But likewise, I think it's nice for, uh, to get out on these bikes if you're interested in looking at one of these and you want someone's opinion um, it's very difficult to get an opinion after a couple of hours riding to be honest um, all you're getting is a little taster I mean this is not a full review by any means but it's uh, you know as a road bike this is a cracking bit of kit it's um, it's one of those things that um, I reckon you'd get so used to this bike it, it would wear in so nicely um, Oh, this road surface is a bit weird. Well, there you go, folks. Um, sorry about the abrupt ending, but had a bit of a malfunction with the old uh, sound. But look at it. What a nice, brutish little beast it is. A um, bit Marvel Comics, if you ask me. A bit sort of Transformer. But it's got a really nice sort of appeal to me. I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's beauty in the eye of the beholder, as they say. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. I've had a quick little spin now on this bike. And I've got to say, I, I thoroughly like it. It is a proper proper decent little road bike and uh, if you want something that's monster fast all day comfy and practical um, I hate to use the word practical when you're talking about a 
supercharged 200 brake horsepower bike but this bike could be an everyday bit of kit it's um it's, it's that good um anyway my is ready i've been 36 moto um if you've liked what you've seen and you want to see a few more bits and bobs bobs click the old uh, like button and subscribe uh, my channel uh, is relatively new um, but coming up soon we're going to have some uh, uh, dirt bike that i'm rebuilding so 530 ktm exc um, there might be a few little clips on that and uh, more road tests and i'm going to start dabbling with a few little rider skills things bend assessment overtaking all the stuff that interests people when they're out on the country lanes having a good old black but um, yeah come back see me soon and uh, ride safe